Welcome to Missing Artwork, a show that lets artists behind your favorite album art tell their story and experience in making the iconic image of the music you love. I'm your host, Michael Paul Escanuelas, and today we're talking to Addie Russell, the artist behind the artwork for Death Cab for Cutie's 2003 album, Transatlanticism. Few bands have defined the early to mid-2000s era of indie rock like Death Cab for Cutie. Despite releasing three studio albums, it was the band's fourth studio release, Transatlanticism, that would grab the attention of a larger audience. The album saw success with three singles, a spot on the Billboard Top 200, and multiple references on my personal favorite hit teen drama, The O.C. Though the band was popular around the Seattle area, they were still relatively unknown in the mainstream music scene before the album's release. The story of Death Cab's success serves as a true indie rock underdog story. This is also true for the artwork of the album. The cover is an image of a black bird tied up in red string with a tan paper texture backdrop. The piece was created by Addie Russell, a painter and designer, who at the time of creating the piece was still in art school. In this episode, Russell discusses how she got connected with the band and her process of creating the cover for what would become Death Cab's most beloved album. Well, my name is Addie Russell. I am a graphic designer and a painter, and that my background is in painting. I'm an art school kid. I didn't pay too much attention to design in college, which I now kind of regret. But um, I live in Austin, Texas. <laughs> I ended up going to college in Seattle. I went to Cornish College of the Arts. It's a small art school. I went there and then um, stayed in town for a while. I don't know, needed a change. And probably about in 2004, I moved to Austin, Texas, because mainly it was, I, oh, I want to say it was real estate. Like I knew I couldn't afford Seattle anymore and I thought Austin would be a good place to go. And my sister lived down here and it just seemed like a lot of my friends were either moving to New York and going to grad school or they were staying in town and I just thought that it would be better for my work if I went and lived somewhere more affordable although I thought at the time now it's a little different but um but yeah I wanted to change so that led me to Austin and that's where I've been since 2004 kind of working out of my house. Not many artists can say that one of their early design jobs was creating a now iconic indie rock cover but before Russell worked on transatlanticism she was more focused on painting it was. I mean, it, it still is. It's something that I, I do all the time, whether or not I finish anything. But I like the process of painting. And so in, in art school, I mean, I just wanted to paint. I didn't care about. I didn't have, I think I had a computer. I didn't have a computer until maybe my last year of school. I didn't care about um, Photoshop. Like, I, I remember it in high school and stuff, but I didn't, I didn't, I paid no attention. I was just a total purist at the time. I wanted to do traditional painting, really, until... I got this job doing work for Death Cab. That kind of changed everything. I just don't trust uh, my skills in, on the computer until I've seen it in person and then I'll take a photo or shoot photos of it and then bring it in and then cut it up. I, have, I'm, I guess I'm creative, but I'm also really literal. Like I have to actually see it because I'm afraid I might miss something that's really cool. With Buzz for Death Cab's music growing through college radio in Seattle, Russell's connection with the band came from music lessons and an unexpected request from the label. Well, I guess, I guess anywhere you live, if you live there long enough, it's a small town. And Seattle, I mean, any, yeah, anywhere is a small town. And I had heard, I, I, I knew of Death Cab. I didn't really, I mean, I think I was listening to their music, but didn't even know I was listening to it. You know, it was on the radio a lot, the um, college radio and stuff. And I was a drummer and I was taking drum lessons from Jason McGurr. And I can't remember if he, I think he had just, I think he was in band. I, I mean, he just got in the band. Like they just decided they liked him and he was gonna be a good, a good fit. And so I can't remember what was going on in his world. And then I also knew Josh Rosenfeld, who was the founder of Barsook, but I knew them independently. And I'm trying to remember who, what happened first, but I was a, you know, I was painting and, and uh, I had had a, a few gallery shows in Seattle, and I think Josh had come to one of my shows and saw the artwork, which is totally random because I don't know if it really ended up looking like anything of the painting I do at the time. I think he got a hold of me and asked me if I'd be interested in, tr in trying. You know, we were looking for artwork. Would you be interested? And I was just like, yeah. But I had no idea um, what that meant. You know, I was like, yeah, I'll make a cover, you know, and then I don't know if they, I knew, I don't know if they knew how much... I don't know if they knew my work that well, but they were willing to take a risk. 
I was very excited. <laughs> Glowing at the opportunity to create the album cover, Russell worked with the band to develop many ideas for the project. Like, she developed a lot of ideas. Like, a lot. So I'm trying to think, like, so they said, you know, hey, you know, we're, uh, we, maybe they've looked at other stuff or they've been talking. Because they had pretty much, I mean, knowing what I know now, like, they kind of know what they want. I mean, they're very, like, Chris Wall is very, um, very visual person. He, he, he's, you know, he's a good uh, art director. Actually, they're all really good art directors, which is kind of knowing what I know now is kind of unusual. I'm trying to think, the, the first meeting we had, uh, you know, when Josh said, you know, can you come up with a few ideas? I was so um, excited for the challenge that I, 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 I think I created like 15 different ideas because I wanted to do so much work that they would feel bad telling me no. Like, I, I was so insecure and I didn't think, I was like, I didn't know what I was doing. And I thought, well, if I show them every idea I ever have, and I don't think, I'm trying to remember if I'd even heard the music. I might have gotten a burn CD and told, like, you know, don't show this to anybody. You know, you can listen to it, but that's it. You know, um, I can't even remember. Within the collection of ideas, Russell had an image of a bird. Although it was rough, the band saw potential in this idea. And nothing was in the computer yet. I hadn't done anything in the computer. I'd hand drawn and painted things and... I scanned in um, a stuffed bird, like a styrofoam floral arrangement bird, into the computer. It looked terrible. And I'd show them, it was awful. I, I think I still have the photo. It was really bad. It just, the quality was terrible. Everything about it was, it was actually the worst thing. And they looked at everything, and I think they were really excited that I was really excited and I was committed. So I, I guess my plan did work that I had them in a window where I was like, look how much I've done. Like, you can't, you know, deny that I, you know, I'm trying, you know, A for effort at least. And, um, uh, Nick Harmer saw the crappy, you know, scan of this white bird. Uh, with, I had red string. I knew I wanted red string on this thing because it was transatlanticism. I was thinking pins in a map. Like, maybe that was really trendy then. I don't remember, but I wanted this red string. I actually think the initial string wasn't even red. It might have been white on white. I don't remember. But I wanted some kind of connection. That's what I was thinking. You know, So I was kind of going through it more of a trying to be as conceptual as possible with with as little information, like I didn't, I had no idea what I was doing and what kind of story I was trying to tell. But anyway, he saw that um, bad scan of the bird and said, there's something here, I like this a lot. So it was like, you go with this and we'll be back in a week. And I was like, okay. So um, <laughs> you got it. And so I, I can't remember, I think I went back to the hobby store, found a better bird, found a couple of different birds. And the, and, uh, shot photos of it this time I was I think they were like don't use the scanner like do it real like don't because I didn't yeah I was just kind of sketching at this point so we had the co so the cover was m made and I think it initially had a white background and then we wanted something I think oh it was iconic that was the big thing that was the big thing they kept saying it's like and knowing what I know now is that everyone says that but I didn't really I was like iconic yeah 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 we want an icon for you know something really simple because I had a lot of busy stuff and so um that's how the, the bird was born. I think we had the cover. It was like, this is cool. We like this. And it was, I mean, I don't remember, I, I think looking back, it sounds like it was really easy. I don't, I think there was probably several versions of this cover. With the concept for the cover settled, Russell now needed to focus on the interior of the album. Then they were like, okay, what's going on on the inside? And they gave me full reign. I mean, they didn't really, Josh Rosenfeld, he... They didn't really give me any parameters. Like, they let me run with it. I mean, I think later on, I mean, he was probably looking at how much it would cost to print, but, you know, and these sorts of things, about how many panels it was. But um, I think I kind of came to Josh, and I was just like, I want it to be, you know, eight panels, like, you know, a booklet, and then inside, what about another, like, folder? You know, would that be cool? And then he was like, yeah, yeah, you go for it, whatever. And so I painted the actual layout. I didn't know that I could chop it up, like... So I actually have long panels, long panels on of, of 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 canvas and paper. So what is actually in that the layout of the um, album is actually hand painted in in its entire. I mean, I think I, it's probably it's chopped up a little bit, but I didn't trust myself getting into the computer how it would look. So I actually had to build the panels. I was on a really old computer. I don't think they knew that. But I, I knew a lot of design friends, so I was calling everybody. I'm like, how do you use Illustrator? And how do you do this? And I don't know, because I knew I didn't want to give up the control. I didn't want someone else to take my artwork and then chop it up and make it not my own. I wanted it to kind of be a full piece. So I ended up going to a printer in town that did, like, 
huge printing, like direct mail, going in there and asking him, like, you know, just like, so how does this work? Like, you know, he showed me the, all the offset, you know, the huge Heidelberg, is it Heidelberg presses? Like the big, you know, the big presses. And I thought, yeah, like, so, so tell me everything. How many panels can I have? He's like, you can have whatever you want. And he was showing me paper. I had no idea about paper. I didn't, I, at this point, I wasn't even sure how I would give them the files, like, but I wanted to know everything about it. And the guy probably thought I was insane. I, I wanted to know what they were going to expect out of me, what, what, what the band was and what the, the label was going to expect for me to know. Like, what was the jargon? Because I had no idea. And, I, and they weren't intimidating. I could, have, I could have asked all these questions. And Josh was so helpful. You know, that's such a good label. He is so good at, you know, giving people space, you know, and then also, you know, he, he actually was telling me, Josh would tell me, like, what filters to use in Photoshop. Like, you might want to try this one. What about that? You know, so I actually learned a lot from, from them and designing it too, which is so unusual now. I don't, I don't ever get the artist <laughs> telling me how, how to use, uh, how to use Photoshop. Using her background, Russell created multiple references for the interior of transatlanticism. I wanted to have a really good understanding of how this was going to look. Like I didn't want to paint anything or create anything that, that was too small or too big. You know, coming from a painter background, I thought we would be shooting slides of this, like large format slides of the actual piece. Like, I, I didn't quite understand how it was going to translate. So everything I did was to scale. So when I would start, I think I would, I was just um, kind of creating miniatures or I guess it wasn't, it wouldn't be a miniature, but I was thinking about it in terms of how it would photograph. So I, at the house I lived in at the time, we had old fuses so that the, there's some glass from the fuse box, these little old, you know, I don't think they're legal anymore. Um, the fuses, and I actually would dr I drilled holes into the foam core and then into the in cut into the canvas and popped them in there and then painted around them. At the time, I was really into going to like hobby stores and picking up any kind of texture, anything that I thought would translate well. I had no idea. I was like, I just had a big box of, of toys, you know, of, of of this and that. And I remember Jason McGurr gave me, and I don't know why we thought this was a good idea, <laughs> but he gave me fishing lures from his tackle box. He was, he, he liked to fish. And it had um, deer fur. Yeah, I must have gone to a drum lesson like while I was while I was working on it, and he was asking me how it was going, and I was like, oh, "It's good," you know. And I was saying, I maybe giving him ideas of what I thought we could use in there for different textures or or something. And and he got excited, and he gave me um, deer fur and like little things that you would cut up, like take off and like t make your own lures out of. I don't know. He was really into fishing. I have no idea. What he, but so he gave me some from some fishing lures to to put in there. I don't know if they actually made it in there somewhere. I, I think so. But I was just trying to get everything I could think of. And I made several panels. I think I made five or six long, probably like six by 36 art pieces, you know, basically miniature paintings, uh, mixed media stuff, you know, and I was printing stuff out on the computer and then gluing it on there and then painting over it and then seeing what I could get out of, uh, out of all that. Russell worked closely with the band to create every element of the album. This included the fonts that were chosen and how Russell did the layout of the record to fit those fonts. You know, bringing it into the computer, then I had to focus on um, fonts. The, the band, uh, particularly Chris Walla, had a vision of this font. Like, I think he already knew the font before we even had the artwork. And um, so I, at the time, knowing now, I was like, I really appreciate that. So I was like, okay, this is, we've got that settled. But um, I had to take that consideration as far as how much real estate, because there was a lot of lyric, there was a lot of um, copy, and so that was different. Um, and I think I must have painted, I mean, I started the project with that in mind, like knowing that lyrics were going to go in here and there. And but we, I still didn't have a clear idea of where everything was going to go. I don't even, I, you know, I can't remember. I can't believe I did it. But I mean, I don't know if there's any typos in it. But you know, what's funny about font is. I can't tell you what something said, but I can tell you what font and what color it was in. Like, you know, maybe not the specific font, but I see font and color, but I, I don't feel like that is definitely not a strong suit for me. I, I always, uh, I always second guess it all the time. But anyway, so that was a challenge. When I brought it into the computer, you know, it was like, oh, what's a font? You know, I mean, I know kind of, but uh, so that was different. You know, and how does it change? You know, it does change, you know, when you have it next to the artwork. And for me, you know, not to say that, you know, my art is so precious, but I kind of also think sometimes, you know, you don't want a font that's gonna, there's so much art going on. There's so much, you know, crap in there. And if you have something that's too stylized, like what does that do? You know, it can kind of ruin it. 
I guess that's design 101, but you know what I mean. It's just, it was a challenge. They didn't want, I don't think they wanted, and I've heard this argument before from a lot of uh, different bands and artists is that, you know, a lot of the bands, they don't want their name on the cover. You know, I know that, I, I think there was a time there, well, I know there was a, a long conversation of they, um, the band was trying to get away with just having the artwork and no, and no text. And I think Josh, you know, doing his job, he was like, well, maybe we can put a sticker on the CD. You know, like we need to let people know what they're buying. You know, we need to think about the end game here, which I think is really important. And so, um, and so, but I know that they, they didn't, I don't think they wanted the font. They don't want it. They didn't want any, um, any text on the cover, but they didn't, they didn't get their way. <laughs> for Russell, transatlanticism was a passion project for her tastes at the time of creating the piece. A lot of elements, including the color palette, came from just her preferences. What was I painting like back then? I was, well, you know, I was painting birds. Gosh, you know, I think it's so funny. It's so, it's so goofy, you know, even before this, even in art school, it's like, if you, if you want to like it, put a bird on it. I mean, God. And I hear that now, and it's like, no, this was like, this was before, you know. But um, but I think, you know, I really, I must have really, like, maybe it's a Seattle thing. I know it was a Seattle thing. There's a whole bunch of, you know. But as far as the palette, I think that's probably just, um, you know, it wasn't intentional. It's was probably something that I, you know, those are the colors I was interested in. And I think with some of this stuff, I wanted to, I knew enough that I needed to have it be legible. Similar to the growth of the band, Russell's role in creating the artwork for transatlanticism gave her enough challenge to grow as an artist as well. Gosh, I was probably 24, 23 out of, out of art school. I was kind of approaching this as a kid. It was almost like, it was so exciting. You know, I think in, you know, even though I was, you know, in art school and painting, it's like, I listened to music. I knew, I knew what album covers I liked. And so I really went at this was like, almost like someone saying, hey, you know, like, what can I do? You know, I can do anything. You know, it was just so exciting. And the fact that this band would, would give me the, you know, the, uh, free reign to kind of go come up with whatever you think is cool and i mean no there was definitely like a lot of stuff that got canned um it wasn't like they thought everything you did was amazing but it was definitely a die i mean I, I look back at it and i can see a lot of the flaws in it you know i'm like oh if i could do it all over again i would i would do it this way and i would make things clear or you know just as far as technical you know for sure um i know so much i feel like i know a little bit more now of how i would approach it but definitely had that feeling of like what do I like what is you know what is this and um and they they were just so kind and good about just nurturing that like yeah you're you know I think they were happy that I was happy you know I know that that you know you know as you know now that I've grown up and done more of this you know you don't you don't get that kind of um back and forth or collaboration you know they were really I felt like um it was a real collaboration it's hard to know if Death Cab for Cutie or Russell knew what type of impact transatlanticism would have on the music community. Even after 13 years of its release, transatlanticism continues to be a popular topic of conversation amongst Death Cab fans both old and new. Most of the songs are still in heavy rotation in the band's live set, and the artwork displaying the now iconic Black Bird still resonates with so many music listeners. It was a happy accident. <laughs> that <laughs> it was a happy accident that uh, I don't really know until I'll get an email from somebody asking for the artwork because they um, they want a tattoo or you know something like that 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 happens quite a bit and that's always shocking to me just because I I could never commit <laughs> you know it's just this idea of like really you must like it you know I, I, I always want to say like don't no 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 sleep on it yeah you know the, it's okay, you might, you know. But um, I think of it more of a, a personal, it's more personal to me. I think of it at a time, like just what I was explaining to you, it was a time that I felt like things were, you know, limitless. You know, if you just kept working and working on something, eventually you'll get there. You know, it's definitely, it's not far off of how I still work now. I mean, I guess a lot of it was applied to the, you know, it made it into the final packaging, but I still like approaching um, projects the same way. It's like, how much can I fill in and then, and then edit it back and then pull it back. And so it's crazy to me, like all my have friends who will go back home and look through their, you know, childhood stuff and send me pictures of transatlanticism artwork that they did in high school. You know, so that that's when I really go, oh, my gosh, like that's, oh, my gosh, like that's so that's so bad, you know, or I'm just like, or, or you know, is it better? You know, maybe it, that would have been a good way to go, like more. Um, but so that, that I think that's when I'm more in, I'm in pre I'm, it's like uh, it leaves an impression when I when I see that because I'm like, oh, wow. Me. 
With the success of Transatlanticism, Russell was requested again by the band to create the artwork for their fifth studio album and major label debut, Plans. Stay tuned for our next episode to hear Russell's story on working with the band a second time. Missing Artwork is a collaboration of Chris Lantinen and myself, Michael Paul Escanuelos. We are part of the Modern Vinyl family of podcasts, which represents other great shows like Pilot Study and the Modern Vinyl Podcast. Check out modern-vinyl.com to see the latest vinyl news, features, and to find out more information about our podcast family. Thank you to Mark Redito for our theme music. And of course, thank you to Addie Russell for talking with us. You can see more of her work at addierussell.com. If you like what you heard today, please go and subscribe to our show on iTunes or whatever podcast service you favor. And leave a review telling us how much you love us and the show. We have plenty of episodes with amazing artists in our feed for you to explore. And then go share us with your friends. We're always on the hunt for new listeners. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Missing Artwork or at Modern Vinyl. Thank you for listening.